Shiva Sharhei, and I'm from Hungary, and basically right now I'm doing my PhD in network science in the Center for Network Science at the Central European University. I used to be a data analyst. I started to learn Python a couple of years ago. I'm one of the ex-Django girls, actually. And I was a jur journalist before, and I had degree in statistics. So what I'm going to talk about is network science. Who is familiar with networks? So basically, network, easily say, it's a graph with data. And they are directed and undirected edges. And we have nodes. Nodes are the dots. and. Uh, the edges are the links between them. What directed means, for example, on Twitter, who follows whom, it's a directed network because the information flow is pretty important. And the friendship network on Facebook, it's an undirected network, which means that the, the connections are mutual. So why we use networks? It's a good question. Of course, the visualization is a pretty useful thing. And we try to understand really complex problems. And of course, we cannot visualize always these networks. That's why we use the network science part to figure out how the complex system work. If you see this network, you see like four clusters. And uh, the colors are showing race. This is an American high school from the uh, early of 2000. And the arrows are, sh are pointing uh, to people who are friends of each other based on a survey. And if you see, it's quite obvious we have clusters. And if we wouldn't have the information, who are these people, we will just look at the structure. And that's why networks give a much, much more. So on the above, you see there's a quite dense part between the boys. And then the, and down, you see there are the girls. And as you see, black and white students not really having friendship. And Hispanic uh, kids are actually the ones who are connected them. So these are the visualization when it's pretty useful. And this is another recent one, before I get into the deep part of the talk. It's, uh, it's based on Twitter. And we actually got uh, downloaded the hashtags regarding migrant invasion, because it, this was used by the far right in Europe. And we could actually figure out that there are huge clusters of what people are talking about. Uh, many times, uh, countries, you can see countries, how the migrants were going. And the really interesting one, when we was extracting the data, we could uh, find some tweets which were written by migrants, and they could find their, their way through a network. So these are the powerful visualizations. What, what I'm going to talk. OK, it's pretty, it's useful. And my aim with this talk is if you, as a data science, or, or maybe a future data scientist, you run in a data set, what you think is like network related, how you can do something easily with Python. And I will go through a little analysis, because I usually get a question from friends who are data scientists, like, OK, OK, I have a data, but I have no idea how I can do anything with it. So the two, more, two most important things, I suppose, uh, I want to focus on is how you can do community detections, like the colors and the previous networks, and what are the options to do visualization in Python, and when you should do it, and when you shouldn't do it. So I suppose I have a network data set, great. We get the data, we want to figure out where are the connections, because it's not always obvious. Of course, it can be like, uh, like a tree, and it's easy to understand, but it can be like a network of people who are cooperating each other on a project, and we want to have the connection of people based on a project. Then it's not that obvious to figure out how you get the network, how to project this so-called bipartite network into another one. Of course, we build up networks. There are a couple of good libraries which are uh, available. Uh, I think the network X documentation is much better in Python, but iGraph is sometimes faster, so you can always choose. And of course, when you do the analysis, you have to rethink what you want to do, do some preliminary stats, and visualize if you can, and analyze the results. So let's see. Uh, for this talk, I actually uh, downloaded from, uh, there were a really nice, um, um, a data set about how Python libraries depend on each other. And I just got it a couple of codes to show it's really easy to create a network based on a, a CSV file. So if you have like any kind of already made relations, you can build up this network. The source of this data is from Origardot, and they made this visualization. If you see it, it's pretty, but if you want to get more information, you have to get more into the data. So let's do some stats, of course. You can easily get out with the network X, how many nodes you have in the data set, how many edges, what is the density. If you see the density on the left, it's pretty small. It's like 
6.5 and the minus 5, so it's really, really small. And you can see the number of components uh, which are connected, it's huge. So it's like 11,000 and more. Of course, you can create a degree distribution, which show you here. We have a very few nodes with high degree. And of course, those are relying on other packages. So set up those, for example, it's a really centralized node in that network. And we can figure out which nodes have the highest degrees, uh, you can see on the right. Okay, great, we get this information easily. But what if we want to do something else? So my idea was to figure out what kind of clusters can be found based on the similarity between packages. So I assume they are similar if they, if they have similar dependencies. So uh, first I just got into the, uh, the network, which was the original one, and here, uh, you can see this is the network X in the middle, and I got a few steps away from the network, which was built by the guys before. Uh, what kind of packages are in the original data set, which are uh, depending on which. In the left, you can see a lot of data scientific uh, packages. Here is the request. And, but I'm more interested in like how similar these packages are. So what can I do? I need to project this network somehow, and projecting networks it's, uh, it's always a big question. There are options to project networks when they have common neighbors based on it, or if it's a real bipartite network, which means like you two set of nodes, you, you can play with it a lot. And the idea, what I did here, it was I just got, uh, I used the Newman projection, which is taken into account like how many connections a certain node has, and, and that's how you get weights for the network. If you do this projection, uh, you will get a, um, a weight for each pair of nodes. So when you build up actually this network, you get this hairball, even if you cut out the zero weight. Zero weight means they have no common neighbors, and one means they have totally the same ones. So this hairball thing is really um, common stuff which happens when you are dealing with networks. If you, if you cut out more links and more links and more links, it's really centralized. But you have the weight distribution, and uh, you can um, basically uh, filter this network based on the distribution. So if you see the distribution, we have a lot of zeros, of course, we're gonna cut out them. But what to do with the other ones? If you have a network, and the network structure is, um, is really important to keep the degree uh, distribution of the network, because it does a lot, it can be a scale-free network, it can be a random network, and then you cannot have easily a threshold. So it would be really easy to say that, okay, I get off all the weights which is smaller than the average, or I get off all the weight which is smaller than 0.2. So therefore, we have to find like methods to keep the degree distribution. So there's a method called the backbone filtering. This is usually a question that I got from people who are trying to deal with networks, like how can I filter it in a meaningful way? And this is, the real name is the disparity filter. It gives you back like a backbone of the network, right, really a backbone. It's a, um, there's a bone family correction. It's a really uh, aggressive way to filter out your network. You see, uh, I used this one and uh, with the weighted network. And uh, I, in the end, I got like 2,000 nodes from 11,000. So it's really just the core part of the network. But the important thing is the degree distribution and the weight distribution, it remains the same, basically. So if you have, for example, a scale-free network where the centers are really important uh, regarding like information flow or influence, you can keep these guys. And basically, you do a hypothesis test for each link between nodes, is it important for the certain node or not? And you are not, and then in that case, you are don't lose the small nodes which have like center position in a network, because most of the time when you have a threshold based on the weights, the small ones are falling out. So it, it's a good way to have like the structure of it. So the second thing, which is also uh, usually interesting for people is uh, how you can find the communities. Because of course, we are trying to understand the data and, and the networks are helping to find those communities. There is a good network ex extension library called the communities. It's really easy to use and I recommend everyone to do it. Uh, it's like, it gives you, it based on the Leuven method, which is a really appreciated uh, methodology by the scientific, uh, um, scientific uh, like the researchers. There's also a couple of other methods, probably many of you are familiar with the InfoMap one, or also iGraph has other ones. I, I like this one a lot because the results are usually quite nice. 
And if you see the results here uh, on the original data set without like filtering, you can find way too much clusters and it's really hard to interpret. But the modularity, which is showing like how good is the partitioning, it's quite high. But it stays the same, the modularity, if you, if you run it on the filtered network, but you've got only 128 uh, uh, communities in the end. So in the end, in this case, we have actually a smaller network, what we can visualize in Python, uh, I don't know how I don't know how many of you ever done like visualizing networks or or big data sets with Python, but it's, Python is not for this. Of course, in the previous talk we saw there are like good uh, possibilities, but it's really hard to interpret. Even if you put the colors for the partitions, you can scale it up, you can put it back. So you have to know the limits of Python. I won't recommend anyone to do like, if you really want to get deep into the data to visualize networks with Python, there are other good tools. And there, there's two softwares called Gephi and Cytoscape. This one was made by Cytoscape. And I think it works much better because um, you can, a bit of course, it's not full programming, but you can see the communities. And this is the filtered network. Uh, where the, pa uh, the packages are connected if they share significant level of dependencies. And, and if, what you can see with this dependency network, like mainly the web development based parts are remained in the network and, uh, and the rest is like really, uh, they, they got out because they wasn't in the core of the network. Um, but I also, so if you go through this, uh, this is a typical process, what you do when you want to deal with like a big network. So you, you, wanna, you have a network related data, you do the projection, you have, there are different kind of projections of course, there's a link in the presentation what you can check and then you can figure out what other, other methods are possible. If you have a hairball which is quite often to have a hairball network, you can filter it. I recommend to use the backbone filtering uh, but not that drastic threshold you put in. And finding communities, you can also do like with built-in uh, community detection methods, like the key click click communities, which was in the previous slide, which allows you to have overlap communities. And, and then if you have a smaller network, uh, of course you can use Python to visualize it, but if you wanna do something like nicer or bigger, I, I think you should, you should use like an other program from outside. And then a little extra, what I, I really like recently, if you like to visualize networks with Python, you can do it interactively. It has, it has an extension of like the matplotlib. It, 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 it's as pretty as the D3, but you don't have to write code in JavaScript, so it's, it's, it's quite nice. I really recommend it. It's a screenshot, so I cannot get in because the internet wasn't that good. And you can run it on your own server, you can zoom into the nodes, and there's plenty of other charts which are available in the Lightning library, so I recommend everyone to have a look who is dealing with interactive visualizations. As a summary, I was quite fast, I'm sorry. So, but anyway, we are not in time. I think Network X is a pretty good tool, and the scientific community is really much behind this program. And for example, if you if you see the libraries every, in every kind of uh, part of the Network X, you can find like um, which uh, the algorithms are based on what kind of scientific paper. So if you don't understand it or you want to develop it more, you can do it, and you can read the whole network to add, uh, you, can, you can read the whole paper to add more. But of course, the newest results, which are people I'm dealing with in the Harvard, for example, right now or in Boston, they are not in the packages. So if anyone is interested in network science and want to contribute, they are totally welcome. It's not always efficient. Uh, large networks, even computing, is not the best. In that case, I recommend iGraph, where you should write your own uh, stuff. And also if the network is really dense, as we saw in the hairball, uh, I, I, I don't recommend to use without filtering because then you run out of memory and everything. And for visualization is not the best tool, but I think it's getting better and better. So soon maybe we can achieve it. And, and of course, think twice when you want to do a network visualization because many times you can gain much more with the statistics. I had just had a little like show up. So if you get in the document, document to see, you can see much more. 
And of course, there's the eye graph, it's written in C, so it's faster. And for visualization, I really encourage to use the cytoscape more than the Gephi, even though people prefer the Gephi, but cytoscape is much more scientific. So it was actually really fast, so we have a lot of time for questions. <laughs> yes? So uh, you said a couple times during your talk uh, uh, about whether or not something is small enough uh, to visualize in Python. Could you elaborate a little bit more about what you mean by you know, what's the size that you can work with and um, where that breaks down or why it breaks down? So the question was, what does it mean that uh, a network is too big or too small? I think the easiest way in a network context to say like the number of nodes or the density. Uh, as as I, I showed in the previous slide here, this one is small enough. It has like 2,000 nodes, but it's still not the best way to see. And the original one was like 12,000 nodes and 9,000 edges, but, but even though the density was small. So I would say as a, I don't know, a thumb solution, maximum 3,000 nodes. Otherwise, it's, it's a mess. I mean, this one, if I could zoom in, it looks pretty nice, but um, it won't work really well. And on the interactive version, like in the Lightning, don't try anything which is like bigger than 200. Like it's never gonna work, unfortunately. It's more about the, like, the, the ability to parse it visually. It's not computational complexity. No, it's not the computational complexity. It's more about what you can see and what you can handle and the space. It's 2D, so it's like you you cannot have more. That's the problem. Thank you. Any more questions? So thank you. <laughs>